In this video, I show you how to make a modern board and batten wall with just one power tool. We can do all the cuts with this, and other than that, we just need to use a variety of different hand tools. You're gonna need a circular saw, square, level, tape measure, spackle knife, conk gun, and a hammer. For materials, you'll need some construction adhesive, caulk, brad nails, and spackle. For the battens, I'm gonna be using this half inch MDF that's three and a half inches wide. You can find this at Home Depot in the trim section in eight foot lengths. For me, I'm gonna need about 10 different eight foot boards. And since I already had a half inch sheet of MDF, I just ripped mine down on the table saw, but you can buy this at Home Depot and it's gonna be a lot easier that way. You don't have to go through the hassle of that. Just oftentimes it'll come already primed. So the very first thing to do is find out where you want the battens to land on the wall. There are a bunch of different ways to do this, so don't worry about doing it wrong. Just look at some pictures of other board and batten walls and you can get a feel for how you want yours to look. Once you know how long you want your battens to be, mark it with a tape measure and then use your square to mark a perfect 90 degree angle. This is going to be a reference for the cut. So now you use the square as a guide and this allows you to cut a perfect 90 degree cut. We're going to place the bottom corner in first. Sandwich it there and then that will sit perfectly flat just like that. Now that we know that it fits, let's go ahead and put some adhesive on it and then nail it on. All you need is going to be just a hammer and these little finish nails. But since I have it, I'll be using this. Same thing, right? No cheating. Getting this top piece in can be pretty tricky, so if you have an extra pair of hands, that really would help. But if not, just use a step stool or a chair to get you a little bit closer to the ceiling. The important thing with these vertical battens is to make sure that they're level. If they're not and they're crooked, it can become very apparent after painting. Just like with the vertical battens, you want to make sure that these horizontal ones are perfectly level. So this is where you're going to want to use your level and your hammer to kind of shim it up to be perfectly flat. Then you can use that as a reference for the rest of the horizontal battens to make sure that they're all perfectly straight. Now remember the construction adhesive is what's going to stick it onto the wall. These nails are just to hold it there until that dries. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to spackling. The purpose of this is to make sure that we can fill in any cracks so that when we paint it, it goes on real smooth and looks like it's all just one piece. Now it's time to move on to caulking. So what we're going to try and do is make sure to cover all the gaps around the edges. You can do it on the inside of the boards if you didn't get them close to the wall, but oftentimes this drywall is pretty flat. With these edges at the top and at the sides, that's really where you need to caulk. So do it as needed. I'm probably just going to be doing up around the edges and occasionally in these gaps here if the primer won't hide them. Now I'm terrible at caulking, so don't use me as an example, but you want to make sure you get a steady bead all the way across. Then what you do is run your finger across to pull any of the excess off. And when you're doing this, make sure you have a rag on you so that you can wipe off that excess from your finger to make sure we get that consistent bead. Now that we're done building it, we're going to move on to sanding off the extra spackle and then priming and painting it. I got some 150 gram sandpaper and what I'm doing here is just knocking down the edges so that it's smooth. That way when we paint it, you don't see these lines. I'm not going to go into detail about painting and prepping for it, but the one tip that I do have is to make sure you wait for the caulking to dry completely. If you don't, your tape could end up sticking to the caulking as it dries and it becomes a nightmare to peel off the wall. Primer is basically just very thick white paint and so what it does is actually clog all of the pores in the MDF. That way when you go to paint, it can go on smoothly. 
if you chose to buy the boards directly from Home Depot, chances are they came pre-primed and you can skip that step and go straight into painting. And with the painting over, I could call this project done. Thank you guys for watching. This has been a really fun video to put together. If anyone wants to build one of these themselves, I encourage you to. It's easy, cheap, and looks awesome. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing to my channel. I don't make weekly videos, but if you subscribe, you'll get to see them when they come out. Thanks again for watching.